Hi everyone, I'm Heather Podeska. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a more abundant life and business. You're in for high value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their businesses, making an impact, and rocking their brands. And I'm really excited today. My special guest is Brad Powell. Brad Powell is a business coach and videographer who teaches entrepreneurs how easy it is to create engaging video campaigns with just a smartphone and good storytelling. Brad inspires entrepreneurs to find everyday moments that make great marketing, and he's dedicated to helping small businesses get over the limiting belief that video marketing is too daunting. Thank you so much for being here, Brad. <laughs> You're welcome. So, first of all, for people who don't know, I'm sure everybody does, but if there's anybody out there who doesn't know, can you explain what live streaming is? Sure. Um, basically, live streaming is using some mobile device, in this case, usually a smartphone, mm -hmm. and it's the ability to broadcast video in the moment, in real time, live, to an audience of you know, any size, anywhere, who is connected to you via internet. And the amazing thing about it is that, you know, in the olden days, <laughs> not too long ago, the only way to do this was to have, you know, the kind of equipment that we're using right now, which is, you know, you're involving tens of thousands of gear plus a crew of people to run it for you, mm -hmm. which is for most people, you know, beyond their means and for most businesses beyond their budget to be able to do anything like this with any regularity. Mm -hmm. But now, with just a phone and an internet connection, uh, you can go live you know, anytime you like and be broadcasting to anyone who happens to be paying attention to your message. So I think the word that makes people's stomachs turn <laughs> is live. Right. So talk to us a little bit about how people can grab on to the idea of going live without feeling nauseous. Right, okay, so <laughs> it's scary. I mean, when I, the, the biggest thing that I see with people when, they, when I, they think about doing video is they go, no, sorry, I've sworn I am never going in front of a camera. <laughs> I mean, it's a very scary prospect. Mm. However, the interesting thing about live is that it actually lets you off the hook. Mm. I mean, you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, career fear, I'm going to make a mistake, this is going to live on the internet, you know, for the rest of my life, <laughs> and I'm going to have to, I'll never be able to live this down if I, you know, if I do something bad. But actually, almost the opposite is true, mm -hmm. that when you're live, you can't be perfect. Mm. It's just not possible. Mm -hmm. And so you can allow yourself to be more personable and, and just more the person who you are. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that your audience loves that. It's really what they want from you. They don't want you to be coming across with this canned message or this perfect presentation. Mm -hmm. What they want to do is they want to know this person who is you. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that the more vulnerable you are in front of your phone, uh, the more attractive you become and the more approachable you become and the more likely in the case of any kind of business entrepreneurship thing, people are going to start to know you and like you and trust you, in which case they'll want to do business with you. So now, you know, I'm all about image, <laughs> I'm a performer, I'm an opera singer, which requires a lot of rehearsal and a lot of, you know, refinement. So mm -hmm. personally, I value that. Sure. And we were talking about that before the camera st started rolling about the value of, it, of aesthetics. Yeah. And so how do people balance the idea of being vulnerable, of being personable, with coming across as professional, having a clear message, delivering real value? I mean, you're not just going to show up and say, hey, Jeff Hands, I'm here, let's right. party, right? right? I mean, right. there has to be an intent behind the, the live streaming. I'm a big believer in good aesthetics, especially when it comes to image making. Mm -hmm. And I think the more important thing is that when you're wanting to use the medium of video, mm -hmm. you're wanting to involve your audience so that you're really not performing and you're not broadcasting. You know, stage performance and television broadcasting is another medium. Mm -hmm. Internet live video is really different kind of animal. Mm -hmm. And so if you s imagine yourself being present on a platform like say Facebook, which is a social media platform, 
you have to think about why do people come there in the first place? And the answer is they're there to be social. They're not there necessarily to witness a performance, nor are they there to buy something or to do commerce. Mm -hmm. So if you are there to engage them in a conversation, and a conversation that is valuable to them, where you're actually you know, using empathy <laughs> and storytelling, where you come across as understanding whatever their needs are, or whatever their struggles are, or whatever their challenges are, and they feel like, oh, this person is talking about me, and this person understands me. And that kind of approach works very well. And it, you know, it's not that it doesn't matter how you look or how you present yourself. That matters too. But these other elements are far more important. So you can let yourself off the hook of saying, well, I have to be perfect in how I say these things. It's much better to go from an idea or an outline of what you want to say mm -hmm. and rather than a script. Because if I were to stand here and be reading all of everything I'm saying from a script, I wouldn't be nearly as believable. And the other thing is that all of us have these things that are expertise. Mm -hmm. We have all these things that we know and it's our knowledge that is the value that we can share. And so if you're speaking from that place of, I have something of value to share and I want to give it to the people who need this thing mm -hmm. that I have to offer, then, you know, great. People, you know, the right group of people will be responsive to you. Yeah, and I think that's true too about being real, being empathetic. And there is some preparation that goes involved, right? That you're, we're experts, we have things to share, but you have to have some point of view, you have to have some topic that you're going to come, you have right. to be giving value. Right. So right. how would you talk to people about approaching that part of it, of even just starting the outline of what they're going to be talking about? How, sure. How many points should they cover? How long should it be? <laughs> Those kinds of things. Yeah, well, I think a good place to start is to come up with something that it really bugs you. <laughs> and if you have so something... So clearly yours is, don't be overperformed. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, like, if you have something that's on your mind, and if it's bothering you, like if it's just a pet peeve or whatever that is, you practically guaranteed that that's going to be bothering a whole bunch of other people too. Mm -hmm. And it's a great place to start. And if you just dive in and you start sharing the emotional side of literally how do you feel about this thing that's bothering you, you will be communicating that feeling. And literally the people who watch you will experience, and we're talking brain science here, they will actually have the experience of that same emotion. Mm. They'll be right there with you because they'll feel the same thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most attractive things that you can be doing. And it's a great place to start because people will, it's a way to get their attention. Mm -hmm. You know, like in the old days, we'd sit around the campfire and somebody would come in and they'd tell the story about how they, you know, got attacked by the tiger and they got away. Well, that's a very emotional story. It's mm -hmm. scary. And we would all want to listen because if we ever met the tiger, <laughs> we'd want to know how to get away too. Right, right, right. And so we pay attention to that kind of storytelling. Yes. So if you come with something that is a challenge or something that you have a deep emotion about, mm -hmm. people will share that emotion with you. And that's how storytelling works. Mm -hmm. I think that's where people get a little nervous, though, because it does take a certain amount of courage to sure. risk not only being vulnerable, but sharing other kinds of emotions too. Some people are not so comfortable showing anger, yeah. right? Or, yeah. or showing sadness or showing even happiness sometimes for people can be kind of challenging. So how do people, how would you say that people can dip their toe in there and not feel overexposed? Because like, I think that there is a tendency in our culture, social media, <laughs> there's, I believe there's a difference between being um, pers sharing personal and sharing things that are um, engaging and vulnerable without feeling like you are over revealing. Right. Well, I, th I think an important part there, especially in social media, is that you can you want to have a conversation. So during the time that you're talking and whatever it is that you're saying you want to be uh, soliciting response from your audience. And in the live world, you can actually do this. Mm -hmm. People can be responding to you in real time, and they can also be responding to you <clears throat> during the time of the replay. Uh -huh. So for instance, you know, I could be talking about, well, here's you know, three things that I know really keep people from doing video. 
And the first one is they feel like they're camera shy. Mm -hmm. And the second one is they think it takes way too much time. And the third one is they're technophobes and they just don't want to have to figure out all the technical side of, of video making. So if you're watching me now, and this, let's say pretend we're on Facebook, if you're camera shy, write in the comment, camera shy. Mm. And if you're a technophobe, write in the comment, technophobe. <laughs> and if you think it takes too much time, just write time. Mm. And so in that way, I can see in real time which of my audience resonates with which of those three things. Mm -hmm. And if I get a majority of people saying, I'm camera shy, it's me, camera shy, mm -hmm. well, I know that's a cue that I can now start talking to them more mm -hmm. about how to overcome their camera shyness. So what's one tip <laughs> <laughs> that you have for overcoming camera shyness? Well, I would say um, that there's this great film that Matt Damon was in. It's called uh, We Bought a Zoo. Uh -huh. And in the story of that film, uh, there's a teenage, Matt has a teenage son, and there's a teenage girl that he really likes. And he wants to tell her that he really likes her, and he wants to give her a kiss. And they're having this father to son conversation, and Matt says to this character, all you need is 15 seconds of courage. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a lot of people in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and. But it's, it's actually a great metaphor because literally, you know, when you're about to go live and about to get in front of a, a video camera, there is this awkward moment. I mean, you feel awkward. And it, it's very similar emotional feeling to that moment where whoever it was you were with, where you were trying to, you know, generate that first kiss with somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and yet the opposite is also true. Like as soon as it happens, like, once you've kissed that person, usually you got a pretty good response mm -hmm. and you feel fantastic. And in social media, if you go live and you, you will get a response from people and the response will probably be that a ton of people will like, you know, they'll hit the like button, you'll get a ton of likes and a bunch of other people say, oh, it's so great. Oh, I saw you on video. Oh, you look so good. You know, and they'll tell you things that will surprise you mm -hmm. about you sounded good, you looked good, they're happy to see you, they liked what you had to say, and they thought, you know, it's fabulous that you're even doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, good for you, they'll say. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, all of a sudden you'll start feeling like, oh, I did it, and I, I'm pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. I must have done a fairly good job. And that's how you get over it. Mm -hmm. you, you basically live off of the response that you get from people. And this is so much more readily accessible because of the live social media setting. Mm -hmm. You'll be getting this support from your audience that is really not possible. I mean, it's, it's not even the, the, the same over on YouTube or on certain other channels because there all you're seeing mainly are views. Mm -hmm. And views are anonymous. So I was going to ask you about that. Is this primarily Facebook? Because I know there's... Instagram has live now, yes. and the store on Facebook has the stories on the top. Now they've added that as well. That's kind of like Instagram. Is this and there's Periscope? That's right. So is this primarily for Facebook, Periscope? Can it be as effective in the other platforms? Yeah. Well, I, I think the answer to that question is in terms of like where would you want to go live? Mm -hmm. It depends on where is your audience online. Mm -hmm. So if you have an audience that happens to already be on Periscope then you probably want to go there. And same for Facebook and same for Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the age and the demographic and the interest and so forth. It also depends on uh, the way that you would like to interact with them. Mm -hmm. uh, because the different platforms have sort of different levels of ways that they interact. Over on Periscope, what happens there is that people show their love by tapping on these little hearts. Mm -hmm. And so if you're really popular, you'll get this flood of little hearts that will come across the screen. That's so wonderful. <laughs> just in general, whoever made that up. I mean, just like to have people send you love like that's awesome. Right, yeah, no, and you're, and, like, and you're watching yourself, you know, and it's there. You're seeing yourself on the phone, and then all of a sudden your face is covered with hearts. <laughs> it's pretty good positive feedback. Yeah, and you're just like, well, I must be doing something right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, on, however, on Facebook, what I like about it is that they have different um, environments that allow you to use live video. Mm -hmm. So for example, you can create a group, which is a private group, and it's just for you know, the members of, of this more exclusive audience that you create 
based on a particular topic. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to begin because it's super safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you and the other members of the group can be making videos there and sharing stuff and sharing commenting and it's only held in the group. So only members of the group can see it and it actually can't be shared outside of the group. Oh, that's, that's an important thing because yeah. I've been in groups before where I've posted something and I've been like, you know, this is for your eyes only, whatever. Right. It might be right. insider content or whatever. So right. that's important to know. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and or you can have a business page, mm -hmm. which then is much more public and can help build the brand for your business itself. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on sort of which kind of forum you want to create you know, for this kind of broadcasting and who you want to be talking and how public you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, it's wonderful. The group thing is fantastic just simply because a group can be very engaged around, you know, the, the problem and the solution that you, your business offers. Yeah. And so you can have this ongoing conversation around all aspects of, you know, let's get closer to the desirable outcome that we're all seeking here. Mm -hmm. And you're giving people daily or weekly the experience of getting closer to that solution. Mm -hmm. And it's very experiential. Mm. And when your prospective clients or your prospective customers are getting the experience, like literally getting the experience of getting closer to the solution that your business solves, that's so attractive because yeah. they're doing it with you. Mm -hmm. And so, it, you know, they build an appetite. Well, I really am, you know, first things, two things happen. One is they believe that they can get the solution. Mm -hmm. Well, and they're building that, that trust factor, yeah, right? Yeah, completely. But yeah. I mean, the biggest block that people have to whatever challenge they're facing is that they become resigned to the challenge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether we're talking about weight loss or we're talking about depression or we're talking about anything to do with health or we're talking about, oh, my business is just struggling. I'm never going to get it to where I want it to be. They feel like this is my lot. Like, I've been working at this for all this time and I'm just kind of here and this is, I just have to keep plugging away at this place and this is all it's ever going to be for me. Mm -hmm. And they kind of give up or at least they resign themselves to having it be difficult. Mm -hmm. And so if you can come in <laughs> and the wonderful thing is that you can actually do this with video. Like you can do it one-on-one -on -one, and that's awesome. That works really well. But here's a medium by which, you know, for no cost, all the time it takes is the time to go live and do it. So mm -hmm. it's not much time and not a lot of effort. Like I pull my phone out, I press the record and I start talking. That's all it takes for me to do this. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I can help not one person, but as many people who are listening to me mm -hmm. in my audience, that could be thousands. Mm -hmm. And they're all having this experience of getting closer to this thing that they would really like, mm -hmm. that they really desire, that they had previously believed couldn't happen for them. Mm. That's so powerful. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're going, wow, look what just happened to all of us. Yeah. And do they want more? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> so this is all about really experiential marketing. Yeah. Like, like doing something experiential in the form of how you market yourself. Mm -hmm. So you said it could be thousands. Oh, yeah. And I think that sometimes people worry that you said the three that I'm camera shy, I don't have the time, and I'm a technophobe. Right. And I can think of another one that people, I've heard people worry about, what if nobody shows up and oh, I'm just yeah, sitting right. there? So how do you... There's you know, a solution for that. Okay, so let's get, <laughs> let's get to the solution. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Um, I went to, I do some live streaming for uh, public events. Mm -hmm. And so a friend of mine was just starting a brand new event last Friday. And this was a executive leadership series speaker series. And he had invited three panelists, a special host, and another speaker to do like a separate thing to be presenters at this new event. And it was happening uh, Friday morning, downtown Boston, at one of the shared workspaces, the CIC in Boston. And last Friday was torrential downpour rain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so which really kind of negatively affected the turnout. Mm. So at this first time event, in this room, which could seat about 100 people, I think we had an audience size of about 12. Mm -hmm. you know, and then we had the presenters and stuff. So there was maybe even as many as 20 of us you know, in the room. But that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> so one could have looked at that and thought, oh, what a, what a bummer. <laughs> like, what a failure this is. Like, yeah. I did all this work to, to make this event happen, and this is who shows up. It's just this small little crowd. So I was there 
live streaming. Mm. And so one of the first things that I did was I got up in front of our small group and I said, look, this is a first time event. And look at who's here. Like, there's some really fantastic speakers, and we're lucky that we have this nice intimate gathering where we get to be with them, and we can ask them any question that we want. Isn't that cool? And we want to see this event grow and be much bigger. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to enlist you in helping me do that. And I literally had them pull out their phone. We're all going, where it's live. And I said, okay, go to the page, you know, my page, Awesome Video Makers, where this is streaming right now. And they all did this. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, great. Well, all I need you to do now is hit the share button. Uh, mm -hmm. And so each person there, you know, they have like whatever, 500 to 800 friends on Facebook. So as soon as they share the live stream, mm -hmm. it's going to be visible to all of those people mm -hmm. in their reach. And the cool thing is that right now, Facebook loves live video. So they promote it and they make it highly visible to everyone who's, so, who's in your feed. So it's more, does, is Facebook friendlier towards live versus recorded video? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. and, and way friendlier than just doing a single like text post or a picture. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what happened was, um, you know, this reach went out, these people all shared this. We had a reach of over 3,000 people. Wow. That's how visible it became. Yeah. And we had views that were around 850. That's 850 actually watched wow. the video. So instead of the 12 people who came, mm -hmm. now we were speaking to hundreds. Yeah, that's awesome. It was amazing. That's amazing. So you are clearly an expert at what you do. You're clearly <laughs> passionate about what you do. How did you get involved in this? How did it become the thing that seduced you? Mm, well, I've always been making images ever since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was lucky that my high school had a photography program. And I got very, at that time I was doing still photography and I got very, and it was black and white, and I was you know, reading Life magazine and just really intrigued by how a single image could tell a story, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of documentary photography. Mm -hmm. And I got very, very interested in that. And at the same time, I had this big music interest. So previously, my, my previous enterprise to this one was a music business where I was literally traveling around the world helping to create content for musicians. That sounds so awful. <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> so it was, you know, it was live music video. Uh -huh. And I was, it was great. I mean, I would be able to get up on stage and shoot you know, from the stage you know, at the artist and to the audience. And then after the show, I would go backstage and interview these same artists. Mm. And then I would license this content and license their music to the media companies that featured they're, they're these kinds of these world music artists in their programming. Mm -hmm. So I had partners that were things like Afropop Worldwide Radio Show and Link TV, which was a cable TV network that was doing world music. And I ended up with about two dozen of these kind of media partners. And right out of the blue, National Geographic decided they wanted to do something with music. Mm. And they'd never done anything with music before. Yeah. And so they started talking to all my partners saying, well, we want to do music. Who should we talk to? How do we do it? And they all said, you should call this guy named Brad because <laughs> <Nice. laughs> he, he has the content you want. And so I literally you know, got that call from Nat Geo and they said, well, can you come to Washington DC? We want you to work for us. And in no time at all, like, they were saying, yes, you know, here's, they gave me a contract. I ended up working with them for about six years, and they offered, like, say, we want to bring you in, we want to buy your business, we want, you know, this whole thing. It was amazing. It was like yeah. a miracle. And um, anyway, that's, that's how I started doing a lot of video. Mm -hmm. And of course, the music industry has really shifted. Mm -hmm. And what I saw was that what I was doing was I was basically helping entrepreneurs reach their audience using video as the main tool. Mm -hmm. So as social media came into being, and I could see, wow, this works for anyone, uh, particularly business people and entrepreneurs. So I started doing more work that way. And now I really don't do a lot of video making myself in the way that I used to. Now I'm completely turned around where I'm teaching mm. all these different kinds of people how to do this for themselves. Yeah, that's amazing. So you're teaching. Tell us a little bit about what you do now and if people want to know about learning more from you and sure. where they can find you, more information about that. Yeah, well, uh, it's easy to find me. I, my company is called <clears throat> Awesome Video Makers. Awesome Video Makers. So you go awesomevideomakers.com. Mm -hmm. And 
I have all kinds of content there, which is around how to you know, reach and engage your audience using video, and particularly simple tools like live video. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually have a free training, which is all to do with how to do live streaming. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go to livestreamrockstar.com, mm -hmm. that free training is just sitting there. Oh. And people, anyone can go in and start that and jump in and you know, start pulling out your phone and learning the ins and outs and nuances of engagement people around doing live stream. Mm -hmm. So what is one tip you can give people to increase their audience viewing? So to get more people to come to their live stream? Uh, I think that the main thing that, that you want to do is you want to get people to respond to you when you are talking to them. Mm -hmm. So most people make the mistake of they're, they're talking and they don't have any kind of you want it to be more of a call and response. Yeah. So just as the example I gave, you want to say, you know, if you're in this camp over here, mm -hmm. type in this word mm -hmm. and give them, literally tell them the word to say. Mm -hmm. And that makes it really easy for them to comment. And remember that most of the people who watch your video won't be watching live. Mm -hmm. It'll be watching, you know, 24 hours later during mm -hmm. a replay. Yeah. But they'll still respond to you. Mm -hmm. And that's really critical because then you can look at the feed later mm -hmm. and see the responses and reply to them mm. and actually start having a real conversation. And that's where this medium becomes terrifically valuable. Yeah, that's awesome. So I've seen it where people say, I'm going to be on at 7 o'clock. Is that a smart thing to do to give a heads up that you're going to go at a certain time? Sure. Saying that you're going to be on is good, but uh, more important than that is being consistent. Mm. So saying that I'm going to be on every Thursday at 2 uh -huh. is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or Friday at five or whatever whatever time is the time you choose. But having that consistency so that people know when and where to find you. Mm -hmm. And doing it, don't miss. Like be there every week, be there twice a week, whatever the whatever the time you choose for yourself, just keep it very consistent. That's really smart. Yeah, that builds that, that trust too. You know, right. that you can rely on somebody that they're right. gonna be there, they'll draw. It's like getting your own show. Yes, completely. Well, I mean, this is it. You're basically enabling yourself to create your own program. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing how the world has changed and it is everybody has availability to the opportunities if they know how to use them. And it's so great that, you know, people like you are <laughs> are leading the way and, and, you know, debunking the myth that it's overwhelming, daunting, that right. you have to be a superstar to do it, that anybody can actually do it. Right. So thank you so much for doing that. And I would just want to acknowledge you for, <laughs> for sharing your expertise. You've been around the world and helped musicians and entrepreneurs. And, you know, I always... I always think of people who are cutting edge um, entrepreneurs, helping people find their voice and get their message out there as really being just um, love warriors because <laughs> you, you know it's not just the little hearts on Facebook. So right. I really want to thank you and acknowledge you for doing Great. that. Great. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for joining us here. I really appreciate your time and, and energy. And can you say one more time where people can find you and your... Um, yeah, it's awesomevideomakers.com is my, is my website. Awesomevideomakers.com. And the free training is at livestreamrockstar.com. Livestreamrockstar.com. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. Until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care. Bye-bye.